Okay, so in this video, we will consider limits and the so-called method of conjugation. As we will see, conjugation is used with a difference or a sum involving at least one square root. Let's see how will this play out. We have a limit, so as always we consider what kind of case we're dealing with. As x approaches negative 3, x plus 7 approaches 4, the root of 4 is 2 minus 2 is 0. And so our numerator shrinks to 0 over, as x approaches negative 3, x squared approaches positive 9 minus 9 also approaches 0. So we have an indeterminate 0 over 0 case. Well, one thing is clear, we should factor this quadratic polynomial as it is 0 when x is negative 3. From the factor theorem, x minus negative 3, therefore x plus 3, is a free factor. And, 1 times 3 is negative 9, clearly negative 3. Now what about the numerator? A difference of two terms, x plus 7, and 2. If we leave it like this, we still have a 0 for 0 case, and we can't do anything about this. The idea is, is there a way to remove the square root so as then we can factor the leftover polynomial? The answer is yes, and the idea is to use the conjugate. We will multiply our expression by, and the conjugate when you have a sum or a difference involving the square root, it's simply the exact same term, but you change the sign between the sum or difference. As we have here a negative, we'll use a positive. If here we were at a positive, we would use a negative. So we'll multiply on top by root of x plus 7, plus 2. But we can't just leave it like this, because now we are changing the expression. If you multiply the original fraction by this, and only this, you've changed the problem. You can only multiply an expression by 1, and so the idea is, well, let's just divide by the same expression, by root of x plus 7 plus 2. All we've done here is multiply the expression by 1, and so we haven't changed the fraction. Now, where do we go from here? Well, The idea is we always end up multiplying the term, the original term involving the square root, with its conjugate. And we'll see that we have a really nice simplification that will occur. As for the denominator, we don't multiply it out. It's already fully factored. We leave it as it is. So let's rewrite first the denominator. Fully factored as x plus 3, x minus 3 times all of root of x plus 7 plus 2. Fully factored, never multiply out. Only multiply the term with the square root and its conjugate. The same expression, but changing the sign. Let's see what comes out of this. We'll have to multiply all of the cross terms, so we'll get four terms. So root of x plus 7 times itself. The root goes away, and we're left with x plus 7. And this is where it's interesting. Plus root of x plus 7 times 2 minus 2 times root of x plus 7. Both cancel each other out, so it gives us 0. And then minus 2 times 2 minus 4. And that's our numerator. If I went too fast here, perform the multiplication on your own on the side here. Root of x plus 7 minus 2 times root of x plus 7 plus 2 and you will arrive to this. Well, we have an obvious simplification as 7 minus 4 is 3. And now again, we have a common factor of x plus 3 on top and on the bottom. 
as x is approaching negative 3, x is very close to negative 3, but never exactly negative 3. So x plus 3 is not exactly 0, and so we can cancel it. And as we'll see, we'll have now a trivial limit. We're left with 1 on the numerator over x minus 3 times the root of x plus 7 plus 2. Now we have our new limit. This is what we obtained after we factored the original quadratic polynomial and used conjugation. We have our new limit. We'll look at the case that we're dealing with. 1 is always 1, no matter what, over. As x approaches negative 3, negative 3, negative 3 is negative 6, our first factor, times negative 3 plus 7 is 4, root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, and so we have a 1 over negative 6 times 4 case. Well, this is our final answer. The numerator approaches 1, the denominator approaches negative 24, and so the final answer is negative 1 over 24, and we're done. And once again, you see that we had a 0 over 0 case, an indeterminate case, and the answer ended up being negative 1 over 24. And that's it. You see, the only new idea is conjugation. Let's do one more example, where instead of a negative, we'll have a positive, and we'll see that everything works in the same way. So let's consider the limit as x approaches negative 4 of x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x plus 1 plus the square root of x squared minus 7. As always, we consider what kind of case that we're dealing with. Negative 4 squared is 16. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. 16 minus 12 is 4. Minus 4 is 0. So as x approaches negative 4, the numerator shrinks to 0. Now here, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Negative 4 squared is 16 minus 7 is 9. Root of 9 is 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is also 0. So we have an indeterminate case of one over uh, 0 over 0. As x approaches negative 4, both the numerator and the denominator approach 0. So once again, we don't know what's going to happen. Well, again, two things. We have a quadratic polynomial that is 0 at negative 4, and so a free factor is x minus negative 4, therefore x plus 4. Let's factor our quadratic polynomial. Our free factor of x plus 4. Because we have a quadratic, we can use the sum product rule. 4 times what is negative 4? Clearly negative 1. And 4 plus negative 1 is positive 3. Check. Over. And now here we have an expression shrinking to 0 as x approaches negative 4. And it involves a square root. So once again, we'll make use of the method of conjugation. We have x plus 1, the first term, plus the root of x squared minus 7. Well, we will use conjugation. Be careful here to identify the two terms. The first term is the x plus 1, plus the second term, root of x squared minus 7. Because here we have a plus, the conjugate will be using a negative. We don't negate this one, just this one. So we'll get x plus 1. Let me put this in parentheses so as to clearly see which are the two terms. Minus now the root of x squared minus 7. Once again, though, we can only multiply the expression by 1 because we cannot change it. So we'll bring this on top. So x plus 1 minus the root of x squared minus 7. Okay, well, 
this is the expression with its on conjugate, so we'll multiply these two terms together. On the numerator, we will not multiply. We'll leave the expression already factored. Let's see what comes out of this. So, on the bottom we'll have, and then we'll have the cross terms, x plus 1 times x plus 1, that's x plus 1 squared. And here's where it's interesting, x plus 1 times the negative of the square root, plus the square root times x plus 1. Both of these terms cancel, and finally, the root times its negative, and here you have to be careful. You have the negative of the root of x squared minus 7 times itself, and so the entire argument is negated. So it's the negative of x squared minus 7. Right? If you write, say, negative of the root of, let's go simple here, x minus 1 times root of x minus 1, compute this first, this will give you x minus 1, and now you negate the entire term x minus 1, which will give you the negative of x minus 1, which is negative x plus 1. So you have to be careful not to write negative x squared negative 7, as this will be negative x squared plus 7. So always be very careful about this. Let's expand and simplify. Let's do it here. So x squared, x plus 1 squared is, if you multiply x squared, plus 2x plus 1, then minus x squared, minus minus positive 7, the x squared cancel, we're left with 2x plus 1 plus 7, 2x plus 8, which simplifies as 2 times, if you factor the 2, x plus 4. So all of this ends up being quite simply 2 times x plus 4. So let's replace. And now we're essentially done. As x approaches negative 4, x is very close to negative 4, but not exactly negative 4, and so x plus 4 is not exactly 0, so we can cancel. And now we can look at what kind of case that we're left with. As we have a new simplified limit. Let's look at our case. As x approaches negative 4, we'll have here negative 4, negative 1, so negative 5. Here we'll get negative 4 plus 1, negative 3, minus negative 4 squared is 16, minus 7 is 9, root of 9 is 3, so we get negative 3, negative 3, so negative 6, over, obviously, positive 2. And now we're done. We get negative 5 times negative 6 is 30 over 2, which is 15. And this is our final answer. As x approaches negative 4, our fraction approaches positive 15. And so you see, once again, other than the use of the conjugation, there was nothing new. And you can appreciate that a 0 over 0 case in the first example gave us a negative 1 over 24 answer. And in this case, again, we had a 0 over 0 case, and we ended up with a positive 15 as an answer. So always be careful that 0 over 0 can yield just about anything. So to summarize, 
when you deal with a limit involving a difference or a sum with the square root that gives you a zero term, you have to multiply top and bottom of the fraction by the conjugate, the conjugate being the exact same term, but you only change the sign in the middle. If it's a plus, use a negative. If it were a negative, you would use a plus. And that's it. That's the so-called method of conjugation.